a Nigerian court has ruled that a United Bank of Africa, UBA, must pay a customer for Lashadi Molahen the sum of 8 million naira for violating her right to data privacy. The bank opened a domiciliary account in her name without her consent, which constitutes a breach of her privacy right. The case was supported by Paradigm Initiatives Digital Rights Reporting Platform. The judge noted in the ruling that the customer has explicitly requested account closure, yet the bank refused to comply. I'll be speaking to one of the staffs of Paradigm Initiative, Khadija El Osman. Khadija, you're welcome. My name is Khadija El Osman. I'm the senior programs officer in charge of the Anglophone West Africa region with Paradigm Initiative. Yes. Uh, Khadija, I know you people have followed this case since last year and you were waiting for this judgment. How does this come to your outfit? The complainant, Ms. Ashadi, from the inception of this case, so, like you mentioned earlier, we have a digital report, any sort of digital rights violations, it could be data privacy issues, it could be cyberbullying, it could be harassment, it could be something that is, um, for Lasha, they opened an account with the United Bank for Africa, which is UBA. She, um, she had a, a Naira account because it is a, a Nigerian bank. She received some monies in dollars, and then the the bank went ahead to open. In in our opinion, it was an abuse of the the data that they had in their possession. They would not have been able to open. Um, they would not have been able to of the the data that they had in their possession. They would not have been able to open. Um, they would not have been able to open an account if they did not have access to you know her name her utility bills um her next of kin and all the pertinent information that you need to open an account in the first place they abused their access to her data and it was based on that that we decided to go to court because we did start out by writing them to say hey she does not want this account um but they did not listen so we we're very happy to see the judgment that came and ask the bank to, you know, close said domiciliary account, but also awarded damages for the data breach that they caused. Hmm. So what was the turning point in the case that led to the court ruling in your client's favor? So I would say the big thing was the fact that she requested that it be closed. She did not transact with the accounts because... Maybe with transacting with the account, it would have looked as if there was some level of consent, but she did not transact to the account and she asked for it to be closed, but they did not do so. So it showed a lack of respect for the customer, for what the customer wants, and um, a, a lack of respect for the data that they have access to. So it was necessary for us to begin to start to enforce these rights for human rights to go beyond um, freedom of association and freedom of expression to data privacy rights. Mm. So interestingly, I, 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 I'd like to say to the principle of it, because even if you would say she wouldn't have lost anything in this matter, the question is whether or not we should allow banks or financial institutions do what they feel like with your data it is yours so look at it as maybe when you get a certificate from school you get to choose where you put that certificate or what you use it for someone else should not choose for you what you should be able to do with your information so because we now have digital versions of data and information and we register with certain institutions just so that we can access their services does not mean that they have the authority to choose for you mm. uh, what they can or cannot do. If this was a harmless case, what happens to something that is not harmless? What happens when banks and financial institutions start to make investments on your behalf with mm. your name, with your money, 
what happens when banks and financial institutions start to take loans on your behalf? Um, what if an account was opened in her name? She did not know about it. And it was used for fraudulent means. You know, mm. we, we've seen all sorts of possibilities with banks and financial institutions. So even if this case was harmless, I believe that the judge could tell that this there was a lot of potential um, mm. with this matter. That's why we would see it as something that is landmark. Mm. How does this landmark judgment impact the landscape of data privacy rights in Nigeria? And what implications does it have for banks and financial institutions? So it means that they should start to be cautious. They should start to look at at the information as not being their own but being in their care the information belongs to you and you get to choose what you have to do with that information so it, it is one that it's it's a wonderful move in terms of holding financial institutions accountable it is now a means of letting all data controllers know that the information that they hold on your behalf, the information that you have consented to give them is your own and it continues to be your own and they can only act on it based on the authority you give them. Mm -hmm. It is because of issues like this that we're seeing more data protection legislations and more data protection authorities popping up all over the continent uh nigeria just passed the data protection act in 2023 i know ghana has had one since uh, 2012 or so so you you um i would say is ahead of us and you're ahead of the curve with, with this regard mm. uh, let's look at the most significant challenge you faced in building a case around the data privacy right and how did you overcome it a new concept in the country um we have we have the right to privacy within the constitution but the nigerian constitution only grants privacy especially to um telecommunications you know phone calls and stuff like that because it was drafted in 1999 so our data protection act was just passed it has not been tested yet so a lot of people are very skeptical about this they're very skeptical about this issue. They do not see it to be a problem. Um, you know, it's it's a lot of what's the big deal. And you see this with complainants as well. People not even wanting to report in the first place that such a thing has happened because they do not believe that mm. um, there has been a revelation. So first of all, was even trying to explain that this is in fact a rights violation that is worth um that is worth taking to court and then of course building it building such a case with little to no precedent you mm -hmm. know but here we are so we're happy to be building on these blocks and provide a better pathway for more protection of data privacy rights in the country mm -hmm. Uh, let's also look at your digital right platform and the support you provide to your, I mean, your clients, your clients. What role do you play? Do you see such platform would play in future digital rights? I mean, uh, digital right cases. Mm -hmm. So the, the first thing is that the platform was created as a means to provide some level of research and collect data. So we did not want to be speaking about um, the rights violations that are happening out of the air. We wanted to be able to say, these are the trends that are happening in Ghana. These are the trends that are happening in Liberia. These are the trends that are happening in Syria, Syria alone. But also we wanted to be able to provide support for the trends that happen. So besides this case, we have about seven others in court as well. So where anyone comes to us to report a digital rights violation, we will provide support for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Finally, what message do you hope this judgment sends to banks 
another institution regarding their handling of customers' personal data. And what advice would you give to individuals whose data privacy, uh, whose data privacy rights have been violated? So the message that I'm hoping this sends out to banks and financial institutions is for them to update their policies and services to ensure that they respect the rights of the data subject, that they ensure that they are not in any way abusing or violating the rights of those who have entrusted them with their information and their services. Digital rights are human rights. And to everybody who has experienced this sort of violation, you do not need to be quiet about it. You do not need to take it sitting down. Um, the, the bedrock of a society that works is of course democracy and freedom of expression so feel free to express yourself and come to organizations like ours to report these violations if you're unable to handle it alone and we will provide